So as you guys are well aware, I've been using WordPress on this channel for about like seven years. It is easily one of the best CMSs out there to build a website. You can sign up for hosting, install WordPress, install a theme, import a template, and you can literally have a website up in about 10 minutes. It also comes with tons of plugins that can extend the functionality of a website unlike any other platform on the internet. But over the years, I've noticed some problems with WordPress that really frustrated myself along with my audience. So in this video, I'll show you 10 big problems with WordPress and also some things they can do to fix it. And make sure to stay till the end because I'll be talking about a very controversial issue like who is actually regulating WordPress.org. Number one, the WordPress.com and WordPress.org fiasco. About 30% of my comments are users telling me they don't have the same interface I do and they don't have access to the same themes or plugins in my tutorials. The main reason for this is because WordPress.com and WordPress.org are completely different platforms, which causes a lot of confusion. Yes, you heard me right. When you visit WordPress.com, you're greeted with a few different pricing options. Any normal person would assume these are the same platforms with different features. However, that's not the case. The personal and premium plan are different versions of WordPress, However, the business and e-commerce plan is the traditional WordPress that you might have seen on YouTube and many other tutorials. This causes a lot of confusion for first time beginners because there's no way these users can tell the difference between two platforms from these pricing options. I have made a separate video for this explaining the exact differences and I'll put that video in the description below of this video. Next up, plugin updates. Now most of us have an iPhone, Android, or play video games, and everyone is eager to update to the newest version right away. Yet with WordPress, that might not be the best case. Plugin developers release updates for their products, which sometimes include new features, fixed bugs, or patches. Yet sometimes these patches can have a direct effect on other plugins or themes, sometimes even breaking many aspects of your website. This can be extremely frustrating as a beginner because all the hard work you've done can completely go down the drain depending on how large it impacted your website. I would always make a backup to prevent this. Next, security issues. WordPress is the most attacked CMS on the internet. In 2021, 95% of all hacks on CMS platforms were directly attacked to WordPress. Now, before we start badmouthing WordPress, WordPress itself is a pretty secure CMS platform. What are the biggest security issues with WordPress? It's the plugins. About 99% of all hacks on WordPress come from plugin and theme vulnerabilities. Without getting too much into code, one of the most common vulnerabilities is called the cross-site scripting. This is where an attacker will inject malicious scripts into the code of your website. Then it will send the attacker your active session cookie, which usually holds a lot of important information, passwords, and information. It's important to recognize what kind of plugin you're adding to your website. You should also take in consideration if they're trusted and track the track record of the company. You can always reduce the chances of your website being hacked with third-party services like Securi or WordFriends. You guys can also protect yourself by just limiting the amount of plugins you have on your website. If you're not using a plugin, just delete it and completely get it off your website. I know as a beginner, many people love to add plugins to their websites. I myself am guilty of this, but just make sure you don't add too many plugins to your WordPress websites. Number four, constant changes to the UI. With WordPress, you might have to get used to constant updates with UI changes from the WordPress backend, page builders, and many other plugins. Many developers want to add new features to their product or constantly update their UI, which may force you to constantly learn how to get comfortable with the changes. Now, I know I'm gonna get a lot of heat from developers for this next one, but number five, the subscription model doesn't really work. Now, before we talk about this, I'm not some sort of anti-developer. It's actually quite on the contrary. I actually work with a lot of developers, yet I do see some uh, issues from the customer's point of view, and there are some good points to be made. Many development companies offer yearly subscription plans and some offer lifetime plans. When you purchase any of these plans, the company promises support and updates for the product purchased. With annual plans, you'll have access to support and updates for the year, and then you'll be offered to renew your product subscription at the end of the year. Moreover, some development companies like Divi and Brizzy offer lifetime plans for their products, meaning you only have to pay one time and you're given lifetime access for that product, which includes support and updates. So let's break this down between support and updates. I don't like the idea of paying for products and once your subscription is up, you start receiving updates. This can cause a plugin not to work or be incompatible with new versions of PHP. ThemeForest is a very popular website that sells premium themes and plugins, and at first I did not like their pricing model. I thought it was very unfair. However, now that I look at it, I don't think it's a bad option. All products on ThemeForest offer lifetime plans. They also give you up to six months of support. After six months, you'll have to pay an additional fee if you want support after those six months. However, the original product is always yours. You'll continue to receive updates with your lifetime plan. 
What's also very helpful is that if you guys do have issues with the plugin or theme, you guys can always reach out to ThemeForest and help resolve the issue. However, with the pro version plugins on WordPress.org, you're completely at the mercy of those developers. Now you might be asking yourself, don't all the apps actually follow this same model, like on the Google or on the iOS store? Like, what are you stupid, Daryl? <laughs> this actually leads me to our next point. There is no agency to enforce plugin or theme updates once you have purchased it. Like we mentioned earlier, applications on the iOS App Store or on the Google Play Store are subject to strict guidelines and rules. They have a list of restricted contents, impersonation rules, deception rules, and other rules to protect the customers to provide a better experience for all customers. However, with WordPress, that's not the case. With WordPress, these developers have no obligation to offer support, refunds, or even provide updates. What's worse is that many of these plugin developers create plugins with vulnerabilities, which can cause MySQL injections or other attacks on your website, yet these developers bear no liability or risk and you are completely on your own. So to fix this issue, I would make a good recommendation for WordPress. WordPress.org offers WordPress plugins and themes in the WordPress repository. A majority of these plugins and themes are light versions, which will ask you to upgrade to the pro later. Now, instead of these developers creating notices on the back end and begging people to upgrade, it would make more sense for these developers to upgrade through WordPress.org. A customer can download a plugin and upgrade through WordPress.org. And there are many benefits to this. WordPress can regulate and enforce companies to offer support and updates for the product. WordPress can also make a profit by charging a commission of the sale for whatever is sold on the platform. Companies like Google and Apple do the same business practice, which makes sense. Number two, WordPress can be more involved in the ecosystem and have more control over the platform rather than leaving everyone in the hands of random developers. Number three, this will stop developers from creating spammy ads in the back end with options that beg you to upgrade, which are actually quite annoying. And I think we can all agree on that. And as a WordPress user, even if you go to these companies and say, hey, you know, I have this plugin and it's not working well, the plugin developer will blame the theme, the theme blames the hosting, the hosting blames the plugin developer. And it's this, this uh, triangle of death that the customers are in. And it's very frustrating because you're never given a real answer of the problem. It's really no fun to be in that position. I've been in it several times. And if WordPress got more involved with their platform, we would see a lot less of this. Now the next problem has gotten so common, people have actually created a nickname for it. Now WordPress errors are also very frustrating, but the one I'm talking about is called the white screen of death. The white screen of death is when your website displays a large white screen on the back end of your website and makes the back end inoperable. You're then forced to find out what was the sole cause of the white screen of death. If you do find yourself with these issues, always contact the hosting first to make sure that you're using the native version of PHP and also make sure you're using enough memory limit. I set mine to 256 or 512. Once you've configured your hosting options and you're still having this issue, you'll need to contact the developer to find out where the problem arise or how to fix it. The next problem, speed. Many users who use WordPress love it. At first, they start adding a bunch of plugins, importing a bunch of pictures, yet down the road, they come to find their website a little slow and they almost immediately start to blame WordPress. This is an amateur mistake. WordPress itself is a pretty fast CMS. Yet, once you start adding images, plugins, and specific themes, this may slow down your website. When using WordPress, just make sure you don't use a barrage of plugins because this can slow down your website and always make sure your images are fully optimized, which is probably the number one mistake most beginners make. However, with proper optimization tactics, you guys can easily get your website to load like under one second. My website loads at around one second and anything under, I would say 2.5, two seconds uh, is Google's recommendation on how fast your website should load. And number 10, which is a little controversial, the WordPress plugins and themes are moderated by volunteers. Now this one might be a little bit controversial, so let's talk about it. Now, just to be clear, these WordPress plugins are moderated by WordPress.org. They enforce the coding standards of the plugins in order to be submitted to WordPress to make sure the product is functional. What these volunteers don't enforce or moderate is the pro versions of these products like support, updates, refunds, or anything that goes on once the customer has made a purchase for that product. You can see on the forums that most moderators basically just refer you to the developer website if you have a question about the pro version. Earlier in my video, we talked about plugins and themes and we've gone over support and updates. So we have a general understanding of how the WordPress ecosystem works. These WordPress development companies are staffed with several people some even employing hundreds of people like Elementor or WP Forms. Many of these companies can evolve into multi-million dollar companies. Sometimes the staff of these companies may accidentally violate some of the guidelines for WordPress.org, which may result in a suspension or even termination of the plugin. 
there was a list of guidelines to follow for all developers to make sure they adhere to the WordPress.org guidelines. However, in 2021, WordPress.org launched an attempt to collect sponsored volunteers called Five for the Future. The only comments on this news were somewhat skeptic, claiming that WordPress should have full paid positions that are more invested in WordPress rather than volunteers with little incentive. So I'll go ahead and give you guys my take on this and you guys can also let me know your opinion in the comments below. But WordPress.org asking volunteers to decide the fates of these multi-million dollar companies has to be one of the most unstructured and feeble ways to run the most popular CMS in the world. Now with most jobs, you usually screen your employees, right? You get an idea of their working history, their general history, and just a general understanding of who these people are. With WordPress, that's not the case, which leaves me a little uncomfortable. Let's take a look at this next plugin. Meet the Modern Events Calendar plugin. This plugin was the number one most popular event booking plugin in the WordPress repository. It had about 100,000 active installs with tons of 4.5 star reviews. However, the Modern Events Calendar plugin and all the plugins related to this company called Webness was permanently banned from the WordPress repository. I personally emailed Webness and asked for comment and they responded with a large detailed email explaining why this plugin was banned. So here is a response from Webness to WordPress.org. As you clearly know, during our time as a member of the WordPress community, we have made over five mistakes. We received warnings each time and we restrained all of our employees to make sure this never happens again. The last time, one of our developers requested a test drive and provided his email address so that users can send his information to it. However, as we all know, WordPress guidelines prohibit posting company and official email addresses in the community forum. We had one last shot, and that's why you WP volunteers who are in charge did not accept our admission of guilt and apology this time. So this led WordPress.org and Webness to have a conversation with each other, and this is how it went. So I'll go ahead and show you guys a quick conversation that Modern Events Calendar plugin, which is Webness, had with WordPress.org. Now the dev is Webness and the mod is WordPress.org volunteers, right? So here we go. You know, we were sent a list of issues. They have all been resolved. We would like our plugin back up on the WordPress repository. The plugin close is blank, which is modern events calendar plugin. Uh, will it be possible to get an update on the same? Thanks. Maybe they misspelled that. WordPress responds, you have to wait for someone to reply to the email. Asking here does not magically give us the ability to travel through time and do faster things because you asked. Webness responds, can we expect a little politeness, please? Even the email sent is so harsh, so many caps. WordPress, not everyone has bold, okay? Uh, Webness, and such a rude language for a big CMS. WordPress responds, rude to tell you you're violating the guidelines? Webness, a professional behavior will be much appreciated. The way it was conveyed is very harsh. There are polite ways to talk. WordPress responds or WordPress.org responds, this is a 100% volunteer organization. And being polite would mean you have to patiently wait respectfully until someone can reply to the email. Webness, so you mean a response is 100% justified? Mod says, I did not say that. Dev says, thanks. The mod responds, you said professional behavior. I am clarifying, ain't no one here claiming this is a professional org. It's volunteers, smiley face. So please level set your expectations a little differently. So you guys can just look at the conversation and make your own judgment. Upon asking the WordPress community about disciplinary actions, they told me it was up to the WordPress developer volunteers. I did my best to research this, but I couldn't find any info here, so I could be wrong. Now, before we get a biased narrative of these volunteers, there's always another side to the story. In fact, upon an investigation, the moderators were actually very helpful. But upon investigation, Webness did not properly train their staff. Some of the staff even asked for login credentials on the WordPress forms, which is a big no-no. It also stated on the Webness website that if they leave five-star reviews, they will get a discount for their license, which is also against the WordPress.org guidelines. So the situation here is a bit tragic, right? We can see that Webness did violate some community guidelines, but was that really harsh enough to get them completely banned from WordPress.org? Webness has been making WordPress plugins for about five years now, and they did make around, they said five mistakes on the WordPress.org uh, forum. Uh, I feel Webness's frustration because they're arguing that uh, these decisions should not be left in the hands of volunteers with no incentive whatsoever, which I could argue they make a good point there. Yeah, I could also see this from WordPress.org's point of view where if a developer is making mistakes, a ban may be necessary, but to what extent? 
I also think WordPress.org should staff their own employees to handle the WordPress ecosystem instead of this ridiculous volunteer system where they're trying to outsource free labor. Last time I checked, WordPress was worth $7.5 billion, so I think they can hire their own representatives to help their WordPress ecosystem. Shopify and Wix are WordPress's direct competitors, yet they do have strict guidelines and enforce these for all of their app developers. They offer a variety of apps that are enforced by the guidelines on Wix or Shopify's websites. In addition, they have all guidelines for developers for people who have purchased their applications. It also protects customers once they have purchased something because it'll be enforced by Shopify or Wix app market. I like this approach because it creates a more sensible approach for customers when they're purchasing apps. All of these problems I have seen pop up a lot in the uh, comment section of my YouTube videos. I myself, guys, have had these problems all the time, right? Trust me, you know, I, I know my videos, I make everything look perfect and I make it look smooth, but I gotta admit, you know, sometimes I do have problems during tutorials and I have to either edit it or I have to figure what I uh, did wrong so I can understand the frustration as a WordPress user. Also, let me know what you guys think about the whole uh, WordPress volunteers. Do you think WordPress should staff their own uh, staff to handle the WordPress ecosystem? I myself think they should because these people will have more incentive to handle their job a little bit more seriously rather than having volunteers where they jokingly admit to getting paid with uh, gin and tonic. <laughs> you know, so, so that's why I discovered. Let me know what you guys think about this video and also let me know about problems you've had with WordPress. If you like this video, make sure to like it. If you didn't like it, make sure to hit that dislike button so I know that you did not like it. Again, my name is Zero Wilson and I will see all of you party people in the next video. Take care.